Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Brock Purdy makes latest admission over seven interceptions at camp. San Francisco 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy threw seven interceptions between two training camp practices last week, and he opened up on August 4 regarding how he handled it. It depends on what kind of pick it is. If I'm trying to fit it in a window and trying to just be aggressive or I just couldn't see a guy, those are the questions you have to ask yourself, Purdy told reporters on his adjustments. And that's what I do, ask myself. And obviously, I get pretty mad at myself in terms of, dude, you turned the ball over and you can't do that. So it's finding a way to grow mentally for myself in terms of, dude, you can't do that. Or, hey, I was being aggressive here and we're just trying it out and I'm seeing if I can do it with this guy and that kind of window or that kind of look. But at the end of the day, I'm not out there trying to just throw the ball up and act like it's camp and I don't care, because I do, Purdy added. A third-year starter for the 49ers, Purdy became an MVP candidate last year where he only threw 11 interceptions. He only had four the year before in five starts. We never want a lot of picks in practice, regardless of who it is, 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan told reporters on August 2. But Brock has never really had an interception problem. He's protected the ball pretty well in this league for his two years, and he also isn't scared to let it rip too. If we were really trying to fix that and if he had a problem, you come out and that's all we're focusing on and he still has some stats like that, then that's something that concerns you, Shanahan added. But that's something I really haven't been worried about with Brock on, and that's why those stats are also something that hasn't bothered me at all. Purdy faced multiple questions from the media on August 4 about his recent interceptions in practice, and he only doubled down on his expectations. I take pride in protecting the ball for our offense and our team. And so obviously, I'm mad when I'm not completing the ball to our guys and it's going to the defense, Purdy said. I'm hard on myself and the coaches are too. We have a standard here. So it's not, like I said, we're just going out and just because it's practice it's okay to throw picks. No, there's still a standard here. But with that is, I know you guys have heard me say this all over the media, but now's the time to be trying out some stuff in terms of throwing some windows and some tight coverages and whatnot. Conversely, San Francisco had one of the best defenses in the league last year. The 49ers return a core of players who held opponents to 17.5 points per game and made 12 interceptions. Purdy won't excuse himself amid the defense's strengths, and he admitted the urgency of making improvements. The 49ers embark on preseason games over the next three weeks, before the regular season in September. I still have to be better, and I'm hard on myself with it. But now's the time to do it. I remember last year coming off my UCL at practice, I was throwing some stuff, and I threw multiple days of picks, Purdy said. But you get into the season and you're ready for those moments and you're ready to execute and protect the ball. So that's where we're at in the time of year. 49ers rookie Pearsall embraces building connection with Purdy. Chemistry between quarterback and wide receiver is essential for the success of an NFL offense, a foundational principle that isn't lost on 49ers' 2024 first-round draft pick Ricky Pearsall. Following Friday's training camp practice, the rookie wideout detailed how he's attempting to build a connection on and off the field with third-year quarterback Brock Purdy. It's been a pleasure. Obviously he's one of the top QBs in the league right now, Pearsall said. Going into a system with a quarterback like that, it's a great blessing for myself. It's made everything easier, just chopping it up with him each and every day. His locker is actually right next to mine, so I get to talk to him each and every day. You know, going up to him and just having a normal conversation like, what can I get better at? Just asking questions about the playbook and getting feedback from the quarterback. Because once you see it through the quarterback's lens, it just becomes that much easier for a receiver. So just continue to develop that trust and connection with him. 
Pearsall missed the first block of training camp four practices in total while recovering from a hamstring injury, leaving the rookie with a difficult task of not falling behind as the rest of the 49ers' offense gets into rhythm. Coach Kyle Shanahan praised Pearsall's work ethic while rehabbing the injury, revealing he's pleased with the progress made by the number 31 overall pick so far. I do. It's tough when you have a hammy, and you have to be very smart getting him back, Shanahan told reporters after Friday's practice. We've eased him in, he's gone through that real well. He's been real diligent with his rehab and stuff. I know his reps went up a little bit more today, but it was a low day overall, and I think tomorrow will be a much bigger challenge. It's a higher practice. We have one-on-one-s tomorrow. But I've been real happy with his progress so far. Purdy echoed a similar sentiment, acknowledging Pearsall's continued growth while detailing the importance of ensuring the young wide receiver continues to get reps moving forward. I think he's getting better and better, just more comfortable within our offense, but I think we need more reps to throw him the ball, need more opportunities and looks, Purdy told reporters after Sunday's practice. And that'll come. I'm confident in that. But, last couple days, I've tried to get him the ball and stuff, and whether he is trying to get held or trying to get in and out of cuts, sometimes it is tough at practice because you don't always get the cleanest look so you're trying to make it happen. But, he's doing a good job. He's picking up the playbook. He's learning it real well and from what we did in OTAs. Then he had a little setback with the hamstring, so we've just got to get back on track with that, but I'm confident that we will. Pearsall's ability to contribute immediately is of even greater importance as Brandon Ayuk remains absent from practice as contract negotiations between the All-Pro receiver and the 49ers continue to stall. The rookie could be leaned on heavily in his first NFL season regardless of how Ayuk's situation plays out, but for now, Pearsall is focused on strengthening his bond with Purdy, hopefully creating a connection that will fuel San Francisco's offense for years to come. The Browns and the Patriots are the favorites to trade for 49ers W.R. Brandon Ayuk. It's beginning to seem like Brandon Ayuk has played his last game with the 49ers. They still haven't made any progress on a contract extension, and now there's a report that Ayuk is not expected to play for the 49ers in 2024. Cam Marino of NFLDraftBuzz.com writes that the Browns and the Patriots are the favorites to trade for Ayuk and that both teams will pay him more than $30 million per season if they get him. It seems reasonable to assume that both the Browns and the Patriots are offering the 49ers trade packages that they would accept. I'm guessing the Browns would offer Amari Cooper and draft picks while the Patriots would offer Kendrick Bourne and draft picks. If that's the case, then the holdup is Ayuk. He probably doesn't want to play for either team. I certainly wouldn't want to play for the Browns. Would you want to play with Deshaun Watson? He hasn't been a good quarterback since 2020. And the Patriots might be the worst team in the NFL. Ayuk probably is hoping that the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Washington Commanders will make the 49ers a competitive trade offer soon. The Commanders could offer Terry McLaurin and picks, while the Steelers could offer Van Jefferson and picks. But if they haven't made those offers by now, they probably won't. Ayuk has to decide if he'd rather play on his fifth-year option with the 49ers or sign a lucrative contract extension with Cleveland or New England. I don't think he has a third option. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon Ayuk? Leave your opinion in the comments.